concentration in moles per liter is really the standard that we operate by, but sometimes concentrations can be done in different ways, especially if the concentrations are very, very tiny. And then we'll use units something like parts per million. You've heard of those before, PPMs. And sometimes it sounds like it's a very scary calculation, but it's not really that bad. Just to make you aware of the formula, here's what it is. It's really a, a million part difference in mass between the solute and the whole solution total. So a million part difference is, well, that unit stands for micro, which is 10 to the negative 6. 10 to the negative 6 grams of solute divided by grams of solution. That difference there is 10 to the 6 difference, and that's a million. And so it's a part per million. Another way of writing that formula, an easier one to understand or memorize, is milligrams of solute divided by kilograms of solution. So if you just know what your mass is of your solute, turn it into milligrams. If you know the mass of your solution, sometimes you're given the volume of the solution, so you actually have to have its density in grams per milliliter in order to find its mass. Then you can put in the kilograms of the solution here. That divided by that is going to give you parts per million. Sometimes in chemistry, we have to actually come clean. And when we're starting to develop a concept from its very rudimentary stage and then explain it more fully later, we kind of actually have to first teach you some things that are very simplistic, and then later we tell you the truth. Sorry. But here's one of those things. When you take magnesium chloride, and we make a solution of magnesium chloride, we call it MgCl2, and if it's in solution, we write Aq. But you know, there is no such thing as MgCl2 in solution. Because remember, ionic compounds like to make ions in solution because they're electrolytes. You've seen that they conduct. Well, they have to make charged particles. What actually happens is that the magnesium chloride doesn't even exist as an ionic compound anymore, of course, but it dissociates into its ions. And so what we need to do is write dissociation equations to represent what's really happening. Okay, so... If we have magnesium chloride in solution, what are the two ions? Mg is 2 positive, and, and Cl is negative 1. They're both aqueous, and all we have to do is go back and say, well, of course, that's two chloride ions. We put a 2 there. That's the dissociation equation for magnesium chloride. Now, if somebody said to you, oh, you know what I got here? A 0.1 mole per liter solution of magnesium chloride. Well, you really actually have... 0.1 mole per liter magnesium ions in solution, and look at it, 0.2 mole per liter solution of chloride ions. Double the amount in terms of moles in the equation, so we double the concentration in the dissociation equation to get the concentration of that ion. Ammonium sulfate dissociates into its ions. What are the two ions? Ammonium. NH4 positive plus SO4 with a 2 negative. Those are the two ions just off the periodic table, off your list of polyatomic ions, that this turns into. Oh, two ammoniums. Two. And so there's your balanced equation for the dissociation of ammonium sulfate into its ions. It's just take the compound, break it into ions.